again and welcome to our last session of the day before we head to the Meet the Experts roundtables. How T-Mobile is building a data-driven organization with ThoughtSpot and Wipro. Today we'll hear how T-Mobile is leaving Excel Hell by enabling all employees with self-service analytics so they can get instant answers on curated data. We're lucky to be closing off the day with these two speakers, Evo Benema, Manager of Business Intelligence Services at T-Mobile Netherlands, and Sanjeev Chowdhury, Lead Architect at T-Mobile Netherlands from Wipro. Thank you both very much for being with us today. For today's session, we'll cover how mobile telco markets have specific dynamics and what it was that T-Mobile was facing. We'll also go over the ThoughtSpot and Wipro solution and how they address T-Mobile's challenges. Lastly, but not least, of course, we'll cover T-Mobile's experience and learnings and takeaways that you can use in your business. Without further ado, Evo, take us away. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, as, uh, let's first talk a little bit about T-Mobile Netherlands. Uh, we are part of the larger Deutsche Telekom group uh, that is operating in Europe and the US. Uh, we are the second largest mobile phone company in the Netherlands and we offer the full suite of all services that you expect. Mobile landline in that, and, and interactive TV and of course broadband. Um, so this is uh, what T-Mobile uh, is uh, positioned at at the moment. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm already 11 years at uh, T-Mobile, which is me part, being part of the furniture in the meantime. I started out uh, at the frontline um, service desk employee, and that's uh, essentially the first time I came into touch with data. And what I found is that I did not have any possibility myself to track my performance. Uh, so I built something myself, and here I saw uh, that this need was there because really quickly, roughly 20, 20 of my uh, colleagues were using this as well. And this was a little bit where my vision came from that uh, people need to have access to data across their organization. Um, currently, after 11 years running the BI services department, uh, and I'm driving this uh, transformation now to create a data-driven organization uh, with a heavy customer focus. Uh, our big goal, our vision is that um, within two years, 80% of all our employees use data uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to make their decisions and to improve their decision. So over to Sanjeev now. Thanks, Ivo. Uh, something about Bipro. So Bipro is a global IT and business process consulting and uh, delivery company. Uh, we have a comprehensive uh, portfolio of services which presents uh, in 61 countries and maybe 1,000 plus customers as we are speaking, so these are now active customers. Vision point of view, we primarily look uh, to help our customers in reinventing their business models with a digital first approach. Uh, that's how we look at our, our customers to move to digitalization as much as possible, as early as possible. Uh, talking about myself, uh, I have a little over two decades of experience in data intelligence and uh, telco landscape, telco industries. I have worked with uh, uh, most of the telcos uh, globally uh, in US, in India, and in Europe as well now. I uh, have worked on greenfield and brownfield implementation of warehouse and big data platforms. At present, uh, I'm actively uh, working with TMNL uh, Data Transform Initiative, as mentioned by Evo, and we are actively participating in defining the logical and physical footprint uh, for a future architecture for TMNL. Uh, at this time, we uh, are also, uh, uh, in addition, taking care of end-to-end -end ownership of, uh, of projects, uh, deliveries, and operations as well. Uh, back to you, Ivo. So a little bit over about the general uh, telco market dynamics. It's uh, a very saturated uh, market. Uh, everybody has uh, mobile phones already. It's the growth is uh, mostly gone. And what you see is 
um, that uh, we have a lot of trouble around customer brand loyalty. People switch uh, uh, around uh, from provider to provider quite easily. And new customers are quite expensive. So our focus is always to make customer loyal and to keep them in the company. And this is uh, where uh, the opportunities are as well. If we increase the retention of customers or, or reduce what we say churn, uh, this is where the big potential is uh, for around the use of data. And um, we should not do this by only offering this to the C-suite or the directors or the mark uh, managers uh, data, but this needs to be happening to all uh, employees so that they can use this to really help these customers and, and service these customers in such a way that this, uh, that we can create this loyalty. And, and this is where data comes in as a, a big opportunity going forward. Yeah, so what are these challenges though, what we're facing to use is the data. And this is, uh, these are massive or, or big, at least let's put it like that, is we have a lot of data. We, we create around 4 billion new records a day in our current platforms. Uh, the problem is, not everybody can use or access this data. You need quite some technical expertise to add it, or um, they are pre-calculated into more aggregated dashboards. So if you have a specific question, um, somebody on the IT side and the BI side should have already prepared something so that you can get this answered. So we have a huge backlog of questions and data answers that currently we cannot answer. And uh, people are limited because they need technical expertise to use this data. And these are the challenges uh, we are trying to, to, to solve uh, going forward. Uh, so a uh, challenge we see in, in the current landscape is uh, T-Mobile, as Azibo mentioned, that it's, it's the number two telco in Europe and then actually in Netherlands. And then we have a, a lot of acquisitions coming into the, uh, into the landscape. So overall, Complexity of technical stack increases uh, year by year uh, and acquisition by acquisition, if you put this way. So we, at this time, we are talking about Cloudera, Teradata, Informatica, uh, AWS, and many other uh, complex uh, silo systems. We actually are integrated uh, where we see multiple, uh, in some cases, the data silos are also duplicated per se. So the challenge here is how do we look into this data? How do we present this data to business and still uh, ensure that uh, the, the accuracy of the data is reliable? So uh, in this project, what we looked at is we, uh, we, we curated that around 10% of the data you use and made it ready for business to look at uh, through ThoughtSpot. Uh, and uh, this also basically uh, help us not looking at the, uh, the, the larger part of the data all together in one shot versus going step by step uh, with a manageable set of data obviously manages the time also and gives uh, 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 control on cost as well. So uh, what did we actually do and how we did, did we do it and what are we going to do going forward? Um, why did we chose ThoughtSpot? Um, and, and what are we measuring to see if we are successful is, is very simply some stuff I already alluded to is user adoption. This needs to be a tool that is usable by everybody. Um, so this is adoption and user experience is a major key to, to focus on at the beginning. Uh, and, but lastly, and this is just uh, also a cold hard fact, is it needs to save time. It needs to be faster. It needs to be smarter than the way we used to do it. So um, we focused first on setting up the environment with our most used and known data set within the company. It's a data set that is used already on a daily basis by a large group. We know what it's, uh, how it works. We know how it uh, acts. Um, and this is what we decided to make available via ThoughtSpot. This uh, cut down the time around um, data modeling a lot because we had this already done so we could go right away into training users to start using this data. And um, this is already going on very successfully. We have now 40 uh, heavily engaged users. We go, went live less than a month ago and we see very successful feedback on user experience. We had um, either yesterday even a beautiful example of 
uh, loading a new data set and, and giving access to a user that did not have a training for ThoughtSpot or did not know what ThoughtSpot was. And within an hour, he was actively using this data set by building its own pin boards and asking uh, qu uh, questions already. And this shows a little bit the speed of delivery we can um, have with this without um, much investment on data modeling because that part was already done. So um, our second stage is a little bit more ambitious. And this is making sure that all this information, all our information is available for frontline uh, um, employees. So customer service, but also sales employees that they can have data specific for them that make them their life easier. Uh, so this is performance KPIs, but it could also be um, uh, the beautiful word that everybody always uses, uh, customer 360 views. But um, this is giving um, the power of asking questions and getting answers quickly to everybody in the company. Uh, that's the big stage uh, too. After that, and this is uh, going forward uh, a little bit further in the future, and we are not completely there yet, is we also want to uh, really, uh, after we set up the governance properly, give the power to add your own data to our curated data sets that, that Sanjeev talked about. And then with that, we really hope that, uh, or our ambition and our plan is to bring this really to more than 800 users on a daily basis, to full uses on a daily basis across our company. So this is not for only marketing or only technology or only one segment. This is really an application that we want to set in our ecosystem that works for everybody. And this is uh, our ambition that uh, we will work through in these three uh, uh, steps. So um, what did we learn so far? And, and Sanjeev, please add here as well. But um, one I already said, this is know which, which data set you start. And this is something, uh, start with something you know, start with something that has a wide appeal to more than one use case and make sure that you make this decision. Don't ask somebody else. Uh, you know what your company needs the best and you should be in the driver's seat of this decision. And, and um, this is, I would be saying really the big one because this will enable you to, to, to kickstart this really quickly going forward. Um, second one is, and this is why me and Sajif are also here together, is don't do this alone. Do this together with um, IT, do this together with security, do this together with business uh, to tackle all these little things that you don't think about yourself, maybe security, governance, network connections and stuff like that. Make sure that um, you do this as a company and don't try to do this on your own because this also, again, it removes so much obstacles going forward. Um, lastly, I want to mention is uh, make sure that you measure um, your success. And this is people in the data domain sometimes forget to measure themselves. Uh, uh, they can, we can measure everybody else, but we forget ourselves. But really try to figure out what makes it successful for you. And, and we use adoption percentages, user experience surveys, and, and really calculations about time saved. We have some rough calculations that we can calculate uh, changes to a uh, uh, monetary value. And this would save us millions in years by just automating time that is now used on uh, and uh, now to taken by people on uh, manual work. So do you have any to add here uh, as well, Sanjeev? Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll just pick on what you, what you mentioned about partnering closely with IT and uh, other functions. That, that is a very key thing because from IT point of view, if you can see that the data readiness and data quality is also very key here. If we have our data prepared at the right level, ready to be consumed and data quality is taken care of, we see very less challenges when the user comes and questions the data. Those are the things which as a prerequisite, we should be sure about before we expose the data to the tool. Uh, when you're confident about your data, you are confident that the user will also get the right numbers they are looking for. And the number they have in their mind matches with what they see on the screen. And that's where you see the win. Yeah, and and that, that, that again helps that adoption and that makes it uh, so powerful. So I fully agree. Thank you, Evo and Sanjeev. Uh, this is the picture perfect example of how ThoughtSpot can get up and running, even in a large complex organization like T-Mobile. And Sanjeev, thank you for sharing your experience on how Wipro's system integration expertise paved the way for Evo and team to realize value quickly. 
All right, everyone's favorite part. Let's get to some questions. Uh, Eva, we'll start with you. Um, how have your skilled data experts reacted to ThoughtSpot? Is it only non-technical people that seem to be using the tool, or is it broader than that? Eva, you may be on mute. <laughs> yes, of course, that happens in a digital environment. Uh, now, this, this is an interesting question because I was a little bit afraid of uh, the, the reaction of our data experts and our technically uh, skilled people that know how to work in R, Python, and SQL, and all these things. but. Here I saw uh, a lot of enthusiasm for the tool itself and, and from two sides, either to use it themselves because they see it's a qu very easy way to, uh, to, to get to data themselves, but also especially that they see this as a benefit that it frees them up from, well, let's say mundane questions they get every day. And, and this is especially, I got pleasantly surprised uh, with their reaction uh, on that. And uh, um, I think Sanjeev, maybe you can also say something how that on the IT side that uh, was experienced. Well, uh, yeah, from a part point of view, uh, as Ivo mentioned, it is changing the way business is looking at the data. If, if you ask me, uh, they can now talk to data rather than looking at it. Uh, it is making the interactivity there, and that's a key word. Uh, but uh, 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 I see that the gap between the technical and functional folks is also uh, diminishing, if I may say so, over a period of time, because the technical folks uh, now uh, would be able to work with uh, functional teams on the depth and coverage of the data rather than making it available and looking at the technical side of it. So now they can have a, a fair discussion with, with the functional teams on okay, these are the few other things you can look at because I know this data is available at back end and make it usable for you. Uh, and especially the time it takes uh, for an IT driven guided dashboard, uh, uh, that, that time can be utilized to, to improve the quality and reliability of the data. Uh, that, that's where uh, I see the value coming. So if you ask me, uh, to me, I see the technical people moving towards more of a techno functional role uh, with tools such as possible. That's great. I love that saying, uh, now we can talk to data instead of just looking at it. Um, all right, Evo, I think that we'll finish up with one last question for you that I think you probably could speak to um, given your experience. We've seen that some organizations worry about providing access to data for everyone. How do you make sure that everyone gets the same answer? Uh, yes, the, the, the big data governance question. Um, this is what I like so much about uh, that the platform is completely online. Everything it happens online and everything is shareable, which means um, in the good old days, uh, people would do something on their laptop, they would um, add a logic to it, they would aggregate it, and then they put it in a PowerPoint and they will share it. Um, but nobody knew how this happened because it all happened offline. With this approach, everything is transparent. I'm a big, I, I love the word transparency in this, but everything is available for everybody. So you will not have a discussion anymore about how did you get to this number or how did you get to this? So the question of getting two different answers to the same question is removed by, because everything happens transparency online, uh, transparent online. And this is what I think um, actually makes that question moot. Uh, as long as you don't start exporting this to an offline environment and do your own thing, you are complete control and complete transparent. And this is why I love the share options, for example. And, and, um, the, uh, and this is something I would really keep focusing on. Keep it online, keep it visible, uh, keep it traceable. And there actually this problem then stops existing. Thank you, Evo and Sanjeev. That was awesome. And thank you to all of our presenters. I appreciate your time so much. I hope all of you at home enjoyed that as much as I did. I know a lot of you did. I was watching the chat. You know who you are. Uh, I though think that I'm just a little bit in awe and completely inspired by where we are from a technological perspective. Even outside of ThoughtSpot, it feels like we're finally at a time where we can capitalize on the promise that cloud and big data made to us so long ago. I loved getting to see Anna and James describe how you can maximize the investment both in time and money that you've already made by moving your data into a performant cloud data warehouse. It was cool to see that double down on with the session with AWS, 
seeing a direct query on Redshift, and even with something that has so much scale like TV shows and genres, combining all of that and being able to search right there. Evo and Sanjeev, wow. I mean, being able to combine all of those different analytics tools, being able to free up these analysts who can do much more important and impactful work than just making dashboards and giving self-service analytics to so many different employees. That's incredible. And then of course, from our experts on the panel, I just think it's so fascinating to see how experts that came from uh, industries like finance or consulting, where they saw the imperative that you needed to move to these third-party data sets enriching an organization's data. So thank you to everyone. It was fascinating. I appreciate everybody at home joining us too. We're not quite done yet though. I'm happy to say that we, after this, have the product roadmap session and that we are also then going to move into hearing and being able to ask directly our speakers today in the Meet the Experts session. So please join us for that. We'll see you there. Thank you so much again. It was really a pleasure having you.